Welcome, and thank you to today's webinar, Preparing for a Comfortable Retirement. My name is Dana Nelson, Portfolio Manager here at Bell Investment Advisors, and with me, my colleague Forrest Bell, Investment Advisor. Before we begin, I'd like to just point out a few housekeeping notes for all of us to be mindful of. First and foremost, we have allocated some time at the end of today's presentation to answer some of your questions. You can submit questions throughout today's presentation using the GoToMeeting control box in the right-hand area of your screen. If we're, one, if we're unable to answer your question live today, we're committed to answering it one-on-one -on -one with you after the fact. Also, at the end of our presentation, we will be providing you an additional email, which will have a link to complete a survey. Now our surveys are very critical in helping us design and enhance future webinars and presentations. So please give us your feedback. For 2010, we're entering our 20th year of business. Bell Investment Advisors is a registered investment advisory firm specializing in working with clients around investment management, financial planning, and career and life coaching. Now, while today's presentation is focused on part of the financial planning process specific to retirement planning, we do have resources available to you in all of the areas of our business. So with no more further ado, I'd like to go ahead and introduce my colleague, Forrest Bell, who's going to kick us off. Forrest? Thanks, Dana. I want to start today by talking about preparing for a comfortable retirement and retirement planning in general by way of speed skating. Some of you may have had the chance to watch the Winter Olympics and see U.S. speed skater Shawnee Davis win a gold medal and win a silver medal. Winning two medals is exceptional, uh, but this feat is all the more exceptional uh, considering how Shawnee Davis did it. At the highest levels of pro professional speed skating, uh, literally every athlete uses the help of a, of a full-time professional coach, all except Shawnee Davis. Shawnee Davis skates with no full-time professional coach. He's the best in the world and he skates alone. I mentioned Shawnee Davis because I think a lot of people take the Shawnee Davis approach to retirement planning. They believe they have the singular talent to surmount any need for help or coaching. The problem with this approach to retirement planning is that you can only see what you already see and you can only know what you already know. So today, Dana and I are going to serve as your coaches, and our hope is to show you some new things that you haven't seen before and build your knowledge base so that you know more going into retirement. So with that, let me give you the overview of today's seminar. First, we're going to discuss living expenses and the importance of knowing those well. We're then going to use living expenses to apply the 20 times rule. We say that if you multiply your living expense expenses by 20, that gives you a reasonably good retirement portfolio value. Then we're gonna talk about stress testing. Financial planning has evolved greatly over the last 40 years. And one of the innovations in the last 10 is stress testing, which allows us to test for market variance, which is increasingly important. We'll go from there to asset allocation. Uh, we find that asset allocation is best decided and chosen with the specifics of your situation in mind. We'll end by talking about some questions we like to use with clients to help them determine how far along they are with retirement planning, and then talk about the services that we provide our clients to help them answer those questions. And with that, Dana, I'd like you to share some more about our thinking regarding living expenses. Great. Thanks, Forrest. So what we're going to do now is really 
focus in on a specific there we go. Sorry about that, folks. What we're going to do now is focus in on different ways that you can all think about your living expenses. First and foremost, everyone has expenses, and you can really break them into variable or fixed expenses. But the important thing is to know what those expenses are. Specifically, if you don't know what your expenses are on a monthly or annual basis, it's nearly impossible to accurately plan for retirement. Knowing today's expenses can really help you and help us be informed about expenses in retirement. We can look at different polls and studies which can help give us a little bit of context around here. For example, a Wall Street Journal finance study concluded that couples on the West Coast needed about $81,000 per year in income to fund their retirement. Now, what we know about averages is they're just that. And in reality, your own expenses are going to deviate higher or lower than that number. More specifically, living in the Bay Area, you might assume that those expenses on an annual basis are likely to be a little bit higher. And I think that's a good assumption. Now, many people hold with them a dollar amount that they believe is the key to their success. And we often come across folks thinking that a million dollars, a million dollar portfolio, that's the magic number. And so what we can do is we can run a test and see is a million dollars enough. Ultimately, it depends on those expenses you have and a variety of other variables that we help clients think through. So here's an illustration of is a million dollars enough? What we have is a basic individual or couple at age 65 with that million dollar magic portfolio. They're withdrawing $75,000 per year from the portfolio using the following assumptions, an annual rate of growth of 8% per year and an annual rate of inflation of 3% per year netting out to a 5% real return per year. Now using a straight line technique, what we quickly identify is in about 20 years, you're out of money. Now while 20 years is a fair amount of time, in today's world, many people are living well beyond their 85, 85th birthday. And so it becomes quite crucial to plan quite further out than that. So it's our assumption and conclusion that using these variables, a million dollars is not enough. So again, we go back to what are your living expenses? It does all start with that. And with the living expenses, we can inform ourselves of what a portfolio will need to be to sustain your lifestyle in retirement. And there's several ways to determine your living expenses. The simplest technique is to simply look at your salary and subtract out what you're saving each year. If you're not saving any money, you're spending it all. And you really, uh, it, it can be quite quick uh, and easy to calculate what those expenses are in that case. We like to take it a little bit further than that and really help create a budget for clients so that you can account for the various types of expenses, both big and small. This enables you to identify where there may be gaps in your, in your budget or in your expense worksheet. And then the next step would be to work with a, book, a bookkeeper and to really get organized with professional help and guidance. The final thing I'll say about this slide and about living expenses is technology has enabled us to keep track of living expenses in a much more productive and efficient manner. And so what you can do or what we can do to help is to leverage technology to really keep track of those expenses. 
so forrest is going to introduce now a concept known as the twenty times rule.